You might be having a marvelous Monday or not, especially if those preparations for Idalia, maybe Franklin if you're in Bermuda, are underway. And so in this video, I'll be taking you guys straight through the latest expected from both of these systems. And as I have reiterated multiple times in previous updates, we could see Franklin being close enough in proximity to Bermuda to the point it actually induces tropical storm-like conditions. And that is exactly what we see unfolding as a tropical storm watch is now in effect for the tiny nation. So we'll be delving straight into what the National Hurricane Center has and some model data as well. And then for Idalia, it is likely that the system will be making landfall as a pretty intense hurricane, a Cat 3, potentially a Cat 4. I would not be surprised if that actually happens. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, so let us go ahead and get straight into what is happening this evening. We're starting out looking at this wide view of the Atlantic Basin, and we can see that there is a lot going on for some areas. We've got some convection here and there, but our two tropical cyclones are quite evident. There is Idalia in the Northwest Caribbean making its way toward the Gulf, and there is Franklin that is well to the southwest of Bermuda, and it will be making that very close approach. Now, uh, across parts of the Caribbean, going to Northern South America, Central Central America, there is some thunderstorm activity popping up. And we also see that it's getting a bit active off the coast of Africa as well as more of these tropical waves move through. And we might eventually see some additional development out there. And uh, as a matter of fact, we have an area highlighted 50% chance of development through the next seven days, 0% chance through the next two days. So let's see what's going to be happening as we head to the latter part of this week going into next week. But we see this sort of northwestward track expected, which suggests that this could potentially be a fish storm. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. Uh, so that is for future updates, but we want to kind of focus on what is imminent. So we're starting out with Franklin, and here we can see that the cyclone is massive. It is symmetrical, that eye is clear, and it is just uh, very beautiful right now on the infrared satellite imagery, but a very dangerous situation. Now, thankfully, the worst of it is not affecting anywhere. So that's the good news about Franklin at the moment. However, as I said, it is likely to make that close approach to Bermuda, and there is that tropical storm watch that is in effect. So let's go on to the cone forecast and here we can see that maximum sustained winds are 145 miles per hour and there we have Bermuda and that yellow uh, mark in there which represents a tropical storm watch. So it should remain a major hurricane throughout most of this week but as we head to this weekend it is likely to rapidly move to the northeast and lose its tropical characteristics as it does so. But for now further intensification is likely and it could be near, very near, at five intensity as we head into tomorrow and I wouldn't be surprised if it actually manages to reach there so let's see what Franklin does but uh, in terms of Bermuda as we're going to be heading into the middle of the week there could be those tropical storm force winds those periods of heavy rainfall even that storm surge affecting the island as well and the U.S. I should make mention of the east coast of the U.S. so uh, the winds of the cyclone will be kicking up that surf and there's going to be that increased risk of rip currents so please exercise caution if you're planning to go out swimming and uh, enjoying yourself so please do so with safety and let us now head into the Caribbean where we have Idalia so here we have the cyclone which is just below hurricane intensity it is uh, bringing heavy rainfall to parts of the northwestern Caribbean sections of western Cuba even the Cayman Islands heading over into the Yucatan Peninsula as well lots of activity in association with it and we still have those watches and warnings in place and new watches have been issued as a matter of fact so let us go ahead and take a look at those and so uh going back to this map here we've got that red area that is highlighted for parts of florida as well as cuba that is a hurricane warning in effect so in cuba for pinar del rio and then in uh, florida the middle of longboat key northward to indian pass including tampa bay those are the areas under a hurricane warning right now and within that area in florida heading to the big bend area that is where the worst of conditions are likely to be felt as of right now though uh, Idalia is not yet a hurricane as I pointed out earlier but it could be gearing up to start its rapid intensification phase let's see what happens as we head into tonight and into tomorrow morning but most of the state will be feeling some impacts or another from Idalia and that explains why we see uh, over most of the eastern coast 
go into Georgia and South Carolina, there is that tropical storm watch, which is in yellow. The tropical storm warning is in blue. A hurricane watch is in pink. So most of the states will be feeling impacts, whether it be something as minor as just some intermittent showers here and there, or as major as those conditions that will be unfolding in the warning area. The very strong winds, the intense storm surge, which is that inundation of the coast caused by the winds of the cyclone pushing the water on shore. And as I mentioned this, uh, as I mentioned in this morning's update, the supermoon will be enhancing that. Why? Because that is when we have high tide out there. We have these uh, this interaction of these astronomical bodies, the moon and the earth. So that is what causes high tide. And uh, that is going to be enhancing the effects of Idalia. And there's also going to be that risk of tornadic activity. So tornadoes, the heavy rainfall, flooding, and with all of this, uh, there is that risk of human life and property being jeopardized and so i'm urging you all to start preparing if you haven't yet done so if you've been watching this video wondering if you should do so this is your sign to get started because conditions will start deteriorating as we head into tomorrow but uh going back to these satellite imagery for the cyclone it is likely producing dangerous conditions periods of heavy rainfall which have likely triggered flooding in parts of the yucatan as well as for western cuba maybe even those landslides as well so i hope that everyone is doing okay and again please ensure that you have your preparations underway if you're to be affected by this and with these passing advisories the national hurricane center keeps increasing the maximum intensity ex uh, expected rather of idalia now those winds are likely to be up to 120 miles per hour those are sustained winds and wind gusts could be a lot stronger than that up to 130 up to 140 miles per hour but as i mentioned earlier this morning i really think that this could become a category for hurricane and uh that is the the reason for that is because nothing much is between idalia and it's strengthening because the conditions should be conducive enough especially those anomalously warm temperatures uh those surface waters across the gulf of mexico but once it moves inland it will rapidly uh losing its status why because it is going to be cut off from its source of fuel and energy but then it's going to be making its way across parts of uh georgia and south carolina bring in those tropical storm conditions. Quickly looking at the model guidance, we can see here that these models are tightening up, these tracks are tightening up, which represents a pretty good consensus of where this will be making landfall. Exact location still unclear. Why? Because there could still be some shifts here and there. It's still some time out from landfall, but overall it's this general area, the big bend, that will face landfall as we head into the middle part of the week. So I will keep you guys posted on all that is happening and all that is expected of the cyclone with my dual updates every single day so i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i get the chance to and as always remember to be weatherwise